Chapter 1, God's Love for Man. Hello and welcome to Steps to Christ in Song. This is the first in a 13-part series where we will be focusing on this little book, Steps to Christ. When this book was first released in 1892, it became an instant bestseller. And within the first six weeks of its publication, it had to be reprinted three times. Today, this book has been published in more than 150 languages with well over 100 million copies in circulation. I love reading Steps to Christ. I don't know how many times that I've read it, but what I personally like about Steps to Christ is that every time I read it, it gives me real solid biblical truths, which help me in my walk with Jesus. You will see no professional actors or musicians in this series. Instead, it has been produced by high school students along with their teachers and staff here at Fountain View Academy. One of the reasons why we have filmed this series in nature is because there is something about being out in nature that makes us feel so much closer to God. Have you ever experienced a time when you were either walking through the woods or maybe just working in the garden when you felt particularly close to God? Steps to Christ says that nature speaks to us of the Creator's love. Well, today we're going to be looking at the first chapter of Steps to Christ entitled God's Love for Man. Won't you join us as we explore this incredible book? To begin, I'm going to ask Melissa to lead us in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for your unconditional love. You know, being out here in nature reminds me yet again of your amazing love for us. And I want to ask you to be with us as we talk and sing about this love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. When I look at the incredible beauty around me, I'm inclined to think that whoever made these things was inspired. Inspired with a sense of balance, with a sense of color, with a sense of texture. The Bible says that God is love, and that he made all of these things for us to enjoy, just as a father does good things for his children. Consider all the works thy hands have made. I see the stars. I hear. Thank you. 
God, his son not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in. God is amazing, and we see how big and great He is through the things He creates. Things like the stars, the galaxies, even small things like these cherries that grow on these trees here. But, you know, I think there's a different side to God's greatness. A side that's personal, that relates to you, to me. And this, you can see this through the sacrifice that God made for us. He sacrificed everything so that we can live with Him eternally. That's so true. You know, when we think of that song, Jordan, um, How Great Thou Art, it sounds like God is great. He created all these things, and He's almost like He's distant from us. But the words, when Christ shall come to take us home, He wants us to be home. He wants us to be close to Him. How do you think of God, you know, practically in your life? Um, a practical illustration of how God is close to you? Well, you know, that sacrifice that mm -hmm. Jesus showed is really what, to me, shows that he really cares. Mm -hmm. um, my dad, when he went to high school, he skipped college and went on with his life, and then he had a family, and I had he had my sister and I, mm -hmm. and he really wanted to go on and further his education, but he had to put my sister and I through school. And for me, I'm here at high school, and it's a lot to put two kids through the same time to go to school. And it shows how much he really cares that he would put aside his personal wants, his personal needs mm -hmm. for us, that he would, like, 
eat, put aside a better life for mm -hmm. himself mm -hmm. and make it better for us. Yeah. So your dad made that great sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And uh, for you, that's an illustration of God's great love yeah. for you. Thanks for sharing that experience. There are many good reasons to accept God's offer of salvation. But living eternally in a place of perfect bliss is not the greatest incentive we have. Neither is escaping from the torments of hell. You see, what should really motivate you is the thought that God is waiting to be reunited with you in heaven and that He loves you more than anyone else could. When God gave Jesus to be our substitute, he gave us the greatest gift that heaven had to offer. And he did this because he loves you.
tongue can never tell everything about the love of God. It's something we just don't quite understand, and words are inadequate to describe it. You know, here on this earth, we have a distorted view of love. Our love just ends sometimes, and our promises are like ropes of sand. But God's love never, ever ends. It's so wide, it's so deep, it goes on forever. God's love goes on forever, and that is the comfort and the hope that we have. But in this world, we still see that there are thorns on the roses, and we see a lot of pain in people's lives. Um, as Christians, Luke, what do you think God would have us do to alleviate this pain, to deal with the problem of pain in this world? I can best explain that with an example from my life. Mm -hmm. At my previous school during my junior high years, there was one girl in particular that always sticks out in my mind. Mm -hmm. She was very emotionally unstable. She was physically abusive, verbally abusive, and was rejected by everyone. I can imagine that. But my dad had been teaching me something. He said, be kind to unkind people. They need it the most. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do just that. Mm -hmm. Then one day, she grabbed me, pulled me aside and said, Luke, I need to show you something. So this is the same girl and you've mm -hmm. been very kind to her. That's, that's not an easy thing when someone's unkind to you. It wasn't. <laughs> no. Yeah. But she pulled me aside and sat me down and she rolled up her sleeves and there were just scars everywhere. Mm. And she said, these are all the times I've cut myself from all the pain I've been experiencing. And not one inch on her arm was left unscathed. Mm. That must have been shocking. Then she looked at me and said, Luke, thank you for all the kindness you've shown me. I've never truly seen any type of love really in my life. Then she got up and just walked away. And just this flood of emotions overcame me on just how we were in a private school, we were in a Christian school, mm. but no one had shown her the love of Christ. Mm. That, that reminds me of that, that verse in scripture where it says that we love because he first loved us. And that that love, it casts out all fear. And uh, certainly in her case, she was able to um, feel love because you showed kindness towards her. And I think that's what God wants us as Christians to do, to alleviate the problem of pain that we find in this world. Thanks for sharing that, Luke. God is good, but our enemy Satan has made him out to be a stern, severe judge watching over our shoulder and taking note of our mistakes in order to punish us. But in Exodus 34, verses 6 and 7, God told Moses that he was merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. I believe God is in our side. But how can we know for sure Who's telling the truth about his character? God knew that there was confusion about the subject, so he sent his son, Jesus, to represent him. Jesus went about showing compassion to those in need. He healed the sick, cast out demons, forgave sins, and lived a life of self-denial. His life proved that God really is love. Jesus did more than simply show that God is love. He came to rescue us from the slavery of sin by paying the penalty for our transgressions. He came to exchange his righteous life for our sinful lives. This exchange was so incredibly difficult and costly that God himself in the person of Jesus had to make the sacrifice. This he willingly did. Jesus himself said in John 3.16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life.
love reminds me of a verse in the Bible. Romans 5 verse 8 says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And you know, we didn't deserve it, but Christ loved us so much. He came down from heaven to this world to save us. That shows us that God's love is um, permanent, it's eternal, it's unlimited. Um, Vern, in your life, can you think of uh, a person who has clearly revealed the love of God to you. Yeah, my father. Um, God has blessed us with so many things that we take for granted. And mm -hmm. growing up, my father it was a huge blessing in my life. I had so many far-fetched ideas, impossible dreams, and an obsession for animals. And I remember the day he joined our nice town golf course. And every time he wanted to go golfing, I would want to come along with my net in my jar. And while he was focusing on getting a par, I would just be wading through the creeks getting filthy. And to top it off after that, I would run through the sprinklers. But when he was done, he wasn't embarrassed of how, how horrible I looked. Dirty. Yeah. <laughs> he just took me by the hand and led me to the car and took me down the road to get a popsicle. And I remember another time I wanted him to build me a tree house. And he had so many stuff going on, he just didn't really have the time. But one day I looked out my window and he was out there on his 14 foot ladder in the humid weather. It was just horrible outside and he was up there building it for me. And another time I wanted to raise baby turkeys to give away as pets. Why would you do that? <laughs> I just loved animals and I thought that would just be the coolest thing. To so, have turkeys. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so my dad was like, okay, it's your responsibility. But he was out there with me every night, building stuff for them, watching them run around. He wanted me to be there with him to enjoy everything. And he made my dreams reality. He left the world of business and seriousness and came down to my childlike level and became a kid again. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of Jesus because he left heaven and everything perfect and he stepped down here to be one of us, to go through what we go through and he showed us how much he loved us. Mm -hmm. And I think God knew that my father had what it would take to make my life heaven on earth and to show me a reflection of my heavenly father. And even though my father was a great example, there were times when he marred God's image to me when we argued and when we had disagreements, but he always came and asked my forgiveness. Mm. And I just think that we need to really look and notice all the beauty around us that God has given us because he didn't have to put it there. It might not always be there. It's like a little note from our Heavenly Father that says, dear son or dear daughter, I love you, Jesus. Wow, that's a clear picture and that's a, a special um, experience that you have with your father to uh, show you um, how much God loves you. Thanks for sharing that with us. You know, God is so good to us. He's revealed His love to us in so many different ways, through family relationships, through, through friendships. The clearest revelation, though, of His love we find in the Bible, in the story of Jesus Christ, in the story of the cross. Let's pause for a moment to thank Him for His great love for each one of us. Heavenly Father, I thank You, Lord, for the way in which You have shown Your love to us through family members, through friends, and through the Bible. Most of all, I thank You for Jesus and His death on the cross 
so that we can live with you eternally. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.